This lecture is the part of the RX Java 3 for Android Developer Masterclass course from the Udemy. And if you are interested in learning the RX Java from basic to the advanced section, make sure you just go and check out this course in the Udemy. I'll provide the link below. And if you need a coupon or anything, just do let me know. And in this course, what we will be learning is we have a lot of things that we will be covering up. Basically, the basic part of the RX Java and also the the RX Java with the room and the database search as well as the RX Java with the retrofit. So hope you will enjoy and sign up for this course. So let us continue with our lecture. Yeah, hi there and welcome back and let us continue. So in this section, we will be implementing our search using the RX Java. And uh, let us get started for that one. So first of all, we need to create the observable. So O V S E R V A B L E observable, and make sure you take it from the ReactiveX extension and dot C R E to create the observable. And the type we will pass it as a string. And here we will say E M I T T R emitter because we can emit the value. And uh, here if it if you can remember previously when we make use of the observable that create in our basic section there we had in implemented on error on next and on complete so this can have a three three type of the emission over here one is on complete and one is on next and one is on on error so we can implement all of this but here we are interested on the on next because if we make use of the search view over here in the search view whenever there is a new query coming in user is typing some uh, some text over there so that need to be emitted so we will make use of the on next over here so let's go back and uh, what i will do is i will implement the m search view inside this observable that create and it should be on the set on query text listener so on query text listener and we will implement the object over over here obj is the object and implement the interface for the uh, search view on on query text uh, listener for the search view so this is an interface and we need to implement the interface member just implement the members and we have a two over here one is of the on submitted and one is on the on text query change so this is on query text change is whenever there is a new text coming in it will be uh, implemented so what we have to do now from here i'll just return the false and here also i think i just what i need to do is i need to return false possible and then i'll just go and implement that one so first of all here i can emit on next so i will just check for the, i'll make use of if condition and if not this should be em emitter dot uh, each dispose if it is not disposed because since this is observable and it can be disposed so we need to check that one whether it is disposed or not and if it is not disposed then we can e emitter 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 dot on on next so you can see that we have on next on complete and on error we are interested in only in the on next here we don't want to throw our error or on complete because that will stop your your emission of the data so the downstream whenever you call on complete that means it's completely stopped and then there is no more uh, on next call anymore and on error is also called and after on error is called there is no more on next call so we don't want to implement all of those if even if there is an error we just want to emit the value because the downstream need to get the search query so over here i will just implement on next so whatever the text is coming over here we just want to emit that one over here so i think that's uh, that's it for the the on query text change we just have to emit that whatever text is coming to our downstream so this is our observable that create is a we can think it's as a upstream where we are emitting the value continuously and our downstream need to get that value whenever we have on next so i'll just go over here and call that uh, we'll make use of a new operator over here which is of the debounce so this is quite interesting operator in rx java it's really useful so first of all i'll provide a time of uh, let's say uh, 1000 and the 
time util dot in the millisecond so 1000 millisecond that should be uh it should be uh one second right or we can just okay so 1000 let us keep as uh, 1000 uh, millisecond first of all and the uh, debounce is quite interesting let's say we are typing a, in in our search view like a b c and if uh, if the time is elapsed around uh, one second then it will emit that particular value over here but let's say i type an a b c and again uh, if i type d and then the time is already elapsed but still it will not emit because if we are continuously typing on the search view then it will not emit uh, and it will wait for the another one second before it can emit that value so let's say i type abc and i waited for another one second then that value is emitted but we think that uh, one second if i type abc and again d e f it will not emit that particular value it has to wait for the another one second over here before it can emit the value so let's see in the practical later how does it actually work uh, theoretically it may be a bit confusing but when we see it in the practically uh, it will be much clearer and this is really helpful because whenever the whenever we type some text on the search view we don't want that text to be emitted on the downstream continuously because that will make a lot of queries to our database and that can cause a lot of problem because uh, whenever you are accessing a database there is some operation going and it is a resource hungry so we don't want to every time the user type a b c and every time the user types there is a, some query and uh, going to the database we want to limit that one so that's why we have make use of the debounce operator over here and later we'll see in the practical i'll show you later don't worry and i'll just uh, subscribe this one subscribe on to the scseduler schedulers and dot the io and then i will dot obscr observe on the android android schedulers dot main thread and so we have observed in the background uh, we have subscribed it in the background thread so everything on the here will be on the background thread so we will observe in the main thread finally i can subscribe it and when we subscribe it we have to implement the on success uh, on success on the on error and on complete so now here is the one that every time we are receiving the emitted value right and then this is an error then this is on complete so what i need to do is lg log d and i'll just put the tag over there and this should be of the value emitted so let's say a uh, result or we can just say search s e a r c h search and i just want to print uh, all the log that the string that is coming just copy this one and just paste it over here and this should be on the e because i want the error and this is the error e -R -R error and i want to throw that error and here this is of the com C-O-M-P-L-E-T complete and okay, I don't have anything over there okay so on search error and the complete over there and then whenever we get get that particular value on on success over here we have to call that view model dot search the student we want to search the student and pass the the whatever value is emitted from the up stream and we get it to our downstream and we implement the search over there and uh, i think that should be uh, that should be the one that we are currently looking and uh, let us try to run and let us try to test out our application and before we move to the forward okay so the application is started and uh, what we need is we want to search so let us search an item and i'll say test test and you can see it will wait for the another one second and then implement that one i'll just type one and it you can see that it waits for the one second before i can uh, go and search that one so if i search for 13 so you get i i get a 13 and i remove that one and you can see i get out again 13 so i get one so here it's actually waiting for the 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 timing over here whatever we pass over here one second right 
and let's say if I continuously type something over here and if I go to the log cat that should print out for us so it, you can see there is printing something for us and let me type something over here test test and you can see it print out the test for us over here right so now uh, if I want to remove this again and you see I get a blank and now let's say I now let's see the how the debounce operator actually work over here so for this debounce what we will do is we will say like uh, test test and one two three four five six you can see that it is not printing out there because i have a debounce operator of one second and when it, whenever the i stop for the one second then it will actually go and uh, emit that value so if if you can see over here if i say test and wait for one second you see the test is coming but if i type continuously type like tt if i continuously type it is not emitting that value on every time that i'm uh, i have a new text over in our search view i have to wait for around the one second to actually emit that value i think you guys got it and if you decrease that value then it has to wait for that particular timing to if we stop for that particular time and the time is elapsed then it will emit that particular value so this will greatly reduce the query that we want to send to the uh, the server or to the, your database because it's not every time emitting the value that we continue to type in our search view i hope you guys got cleared about the debounce operator over here and the next operator that we will implement over here is the let's say dot and the distinct until change so uh, let's say a distinct until change so how do we how does it actually work let us go and see it practically so let me run the application and uh, let us wait for it to uh, come up and uh, let's go and let us try okay so now the application is running and what we will do is we will say our tes to test 13 over here and uh, you go to the log cat you see that the search query is test 13 and now uh, let's say if i just remove and you can see that the test one is executed but if i if i don't want that query to be executed so let's say uh, if i type for here 13 and that query is executed and i delete three again type that 13 over again three right so i don't want that query to be executed whenever uh, like if if it is the same query so test 13 you can see that query is already executed for the database and i don't want if the query doesn't change within this uh debounce time i don't want to execute that query so let's see if i delete uh, three then you can see test one is executed but if i type let's say a uh, 13 over here and that test 13 is again executed now let's say if i remove a three again type back three over here and you can see that query is not executed over here you can see 13 is already executed that's why the distinct until change so that this is the same query so that that's why it doesn't execute the another query but if i remove this one and the distinct until change if i run it again every time there is a some change and it will go and execute that query it doesn't check for whether it's the same query that we have previously launched so if i type type for a test over here and if i say of a 13 okay the test 13 if i remove and type again 3 so you can see it is again executing so again 13 you can see every time i change the text it is executing that query it doesn't check whether this query has been previously executed so this is really helpful because uh, we don't want let's say user type for abc and again remove the c again type back the c so for that the multiple query is executed for the same uh, same text right so the same search query is executed every time but we don't want that one so we want only for the distinct if the query is already there or if the query is already executed so we don't want to again execute uh, again and again the same query so that is the main point of the distinct until change I think you guys got, uh, guys got this uh, how does it actually work and it's really important and really is uh, useful for our search query over here so test 
and 13 so I get the 13 over here and again yeah it doesn't change See? the query is not executing every time because the query is already executed and now you can see that is uh, I need to wait for the one second before it can execute that test one and delete and again type one it will not execute the same query see it doesn't execute the same query you can see over there but but if I miss that one one second of the uh, the debounce timing then it will execute that query because now the query has changed you within that times time we have provided over here so test is not the one as the same as the test one right so it will wait for the debounce uh, debounce timing over there and within that timing if we change back to the same query then it is not executed so test one and you can see that it is executed and delete delete that one and type again it is not executing delete and type again it's not executing so that's all for this uh, section we have successfully implemented our search query over here and uh, i hope you enjoyed this section because uh, it's uh, really important and whenever we have some database application or whenever we are calling to the api so this is really helpful because we have to implement a search everywhere and uh, that's all and uh, let's move on to our next section till then have a great day